Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will learn about the various layout methods that are available in the CSS for building a page layout or the simple web page. So before learning about the different layout techniques available in the CSS, first we need to know the history of this layout thing. Okay. So when in the early days when the web was there, so when we want to design a layout or anything so we used to uh, we used to use the this one table elements by using the table elements so the layout will be designed so the layout they used to design using the table elements so normally what i can say is separating html from the visual styles were made is easier when css was widely adopted by the browsers so normally in the late 1996 or something like that when the css1 was introduced in the late 1996 css1 was introduced so they came with a floats mechanism so for designing the layout thing then afterwards in 1998 css2 was introduced and later came the 2010 so in the 2010 so we got a new thing that is nothing but a responsive website design so from 2010 onwards we will be able to see about the concept of responsive web design in 2012 in 2012 the media queries and the flexbox has been introduced flexbox has been introduced in 2017 grid concept has been introduced in 2019 intrinsic website web design so intrinsic web design was okay. So now in 2021 container queries has been introduced so this is the brief history of the css and the layout mechanism how it was developed so from 1996 when the css one was introduced from 2021 the container queries so this is the total uh, total layout uh, layout layout history so for understanding this layout mechanism and all those things first we need to have a clear understanding about the display property so we yes we need to know about the display property so this is the one of the important concept before understanding the uh, about the layout concept and all the things the normally <coughs> display property does two things the first thing it this does is determine if the box it is applied to act as an inline element or the block level element so first we it, it does the this one for example let's say that we know the difference between a block level element and an inline level element so if you try to see here the block level element how it will become so inline element means it behaves like a words in a sentence they sit next to each other in the inline direction elements such as span and strong which are dip, uh, typically used to style pieces of text within containing elements like a paragraph elements are inline by default so they also preserve surrounding the white spaces so let's try to see about this one so i have a div element okay so this is a paragraph one or something like this i'll try to add it this is a paragraph one okay and i am having another div element like this let's try to have another one div span elements span elements are the inline level elements this inline element one and this is inline element two so here i can write something like class is equal to block and let's copy this one and the for span elements i am using class is equal to inline and here i will try to copy this one for the span here also class is equal to inline <laughs> now we are having class is equal to block and class is equal to inline so these are the elements which we are having right now so now if you try to see for this one block and the inline right so let's try to have it here i am taking the block and i am applying here border one pixel solid red for the inline also i'll try to apply dot inline border one pixel solid sorry solid green so in order to have a differentiation for block level elements we have a red color for inline level elements we have a green color if you try to see the output fine we are able to see the output block level elements 
take the complete row the horizontal row with which we are, they are sitting whereas the inline elements so will sit as a words next to each other so they doesn't take the uh, entire row so now <coughs> you need to understand that you can't set an width and height for for an inline elements for example let's say that i want to set width of 100 pixel and a height of 100 pixel so for inline level element i can't set a width and height if i try to set the width and height for this one we cannot we cannot set it and also the block level margin and padding also will be ignored for example if i want to apply a margin of 100 uh, margin of 10 pixel block level margin means top and bottom level margin so top and level bottom also margin also it will be ignored if you are able to see left and right margin are able to apply it, but top and margin uh, bottom margin are not going to apply it for the inland level elements if i try to apply the padding so the same thing happens for padding it will apply so here you'll be able to see that top and bottom margins sorry <clears throat> so top and bottom paddings are not applying and left and right paddings are able to apply so you can able to see it but it is too overlapping so now <clears throat> whereas the block level elements if we try to observe they don't sit along with each other they create a new line for themselves unless we change it by see other css code a block level element will expand to the size of the inline dimension so therefore spanning the full width in a horizontal mode the margin on all sides of a block element will be respected so now for the inline level elements it's not accepting right so the, we'll try to apply the same width height and all those things for the block level elements so whereas for the block level elements all the things will be respected so here you will be able to see the width the height margin padding everything everything is accepted by the block level margin block level property so this is the difference between inline level property and, and what i can say block level display property so for example let's say that for inline level property i want to apply 100 pixel width of 100 pixel height margin and these all the things should be respected but the element should sit side by side to each other so in order to have this width and margin to apply for the inline level element means so what we can do is we can change this property from display inline to we can change it to display inline block so i can change it to display inline block so when you change it the property inline to the inline block so it will behave like a block level property so that means it will it will be applying width height margin padding top margin and all those in block margin and also the padding block padding it will apply but it will behave as an inline element so that is the difference between this inline and the <coughs> inline and the block level elements for the inline block level element for inline for the inline element so we will be able to apply this one so for the inline level element also if you want to apply the width and height for the inline level elements so then we need to convert that display property to the inline block not to the block or something like that if you are converted into the block level element it still works but it will take a new new line something like new line it will take it so like a block level property it will try to behave so if you want to have it like an inline level property but in order to accept this all the width and height all those things means then you need to convert it convert it into the inline block so this is the basic thing about the display property apart from that is apart from this block inline inline block there are also something like table we will try to see about the table and flex and also the grid are there which are more popular we will be using let's try to see about this one in the next videos okay so hope you understood about this inline block and inline block if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you